stand on this hill. This is Llaregib Hill, old as the hills, high, cool and green, and from this small circle of stones made not by druids but by Mrs. Bynan's Billy, you can see all the town below you sleeping in the first of the dawn. You can hear the lovesick wood pigeons mooning in bed. A dog barks in his sleep, farmyards away. The town ripples like a lake in the waking haze. Less than 500 souls inhabit the three quaint streets and the few narrow bylanes and scattered farmsteads that constitute this small, decaying watering place, which may indeed be called a backwater of life, without disrespect to its natives, who possess to this day a salty individuality of their own. The main street, Coronation Street, consists for the most part of humble, two-storied houses many of which attempt to achieve some measure of gaiety by prinking themselves out in crude colours and by the liberal use of pinkwash, though there are remaining a few 18th century houses of more pretension, if on the whole in a sad state of disrepair. Though there is little to attract the hill climber, the health seeker, the sportsman or the weekending motorist, the contemplative may if sufficiently attracted to spare it to some leisurely hours, find in its cobbled streets and its little fishing harbour, in its several uh, curious uh, customs, and in the conversation of its local characters, some of that picturesque sense of the past so frequently lacking in towns and villages which have kept more uh, abreast of the times. <laughs> uh, the one place of worship for its neglected graveyard is of no architectural interest. The river Dewey is said to abound in trout, but is much poached. The principality of the sky lightens now over our green hill into spring morning, larked and crowed and belling. Who pulls the town hall bell rope at blind, Captain Cat? One by one the sleepers are wrung out of sleep this one morning as every morning. And soon you shall see the chimney slow up flying snow as Captain Cat in sailor's cap and sea boots announces today with his loud get out of bed bell. The Reverend Eli Jenkins in Bethesda House gropes out of bed into his preacher's black, combs back his bard's white hair, forgets to wash, pads barefoot downstairs, opens the front door, stands in the doorway, and, looking out at the day and up at the eternal hill, and hearing the sea break and the gab of birds, remembers his own verses and tells them softly to empty Coronation Street that is rising and raising its blinds. Dear Gwalia, I know there are towns lovelier than ours, and fairer hills and loftier far, and groves more full of flowers, and boskier woods more blithe with spring, and bright with birds adorning, and sweeter birds than I to sing their praise this beauteous morning. By Cadaridris tempest-torn, or Moel Ruidva's glory, Carnev Llewellyn beauty born, Plinlimon old in story, by mountains where King Arthur dreams, by Penmine Mower defiant, Claregib Hill, a mole hill seems, a pygmy to a giant. By Southe, Seni, Dovey, Dee, Edu, Eden, Aled, all, Taff and Towey, broad and free, covenant with its waterfall, Clyroen, Clevai, Dilai, Stau, Ely, Gwili, Ogur, Neith, Small is our river Dewey, Lord, a baby on a rushy bed. By Karekenen, king of time, our heron head is only a bit of stone with seaweed spread where girls come to be lonely. A tiny dingle is milk wood by Golden Grove neath Gronger, but let me choose, and oh, I should love all my life and longer to stroll among our trees and stray in Goosecog Lane on Donkey Down and hear the Dewey sing all day and never 
never leave the town. The Reverend Jenkins closes the front door. His morning service is over. Now, woken at last by the out-of-bed sleepyhead, Polly put the kettle on town hall bell. Lily Smalls, Mrs. Bynan's treasure, comes downstairs from a dream of royalty who all night long went larking with her full of sauce in the milkwood dark and puts the kettle on the primus ring in Mrs. Bynan's kitchen and looks at herself in Mr. Bynan's shaving glass over the sink and sees... Oh, there's a face. Where you get that hair from? Got it from old Tomcat. Give it back then, love. Oh, there's a perm. Where you get that nose from, Lily? Got it from my father, silly. You've got it on upside down. Oh, there's a conch. Look at your complexion. Oh, no, you look. Needs a bit of makeup. Needs a veil. Oh, there's glamour. Where you get that smile, Lil? Never you mind, girl. Nobody loves you. That's what you think. Who is it loves you? Chantel. Come on, Lily. Cross your heart, then. Cross my heart. And very softly, her lips almost touching her reflection, she breathes the name and clouds the shaving glass. Lily? Yes, ma'am? Where's my tea, girl? Where do you think? In the cat box. Come in up, ma'am. Mr. Pugh, in the schoolhouse opposite, takes up the morning tea to Mrs. Pugh and whispers on the stairs. Here's your arsenic, dear, and your weed killer biscuit. I've throttled your parakeet. I've spat in the vases. I've put cheese in the mouse holes. Here's your nice tea, dear. Too much sugar. You haven't tasted it yet, dear. Too much milk, then. Has Mr. Jenkins said his poetry? Yes, dear. Then it's time to get up. Give me my glasses. No, not my reading glasses. I want to look out. I want to see. Lily Smalls, the treasure, down on her red knees, washing the front step. She's tucked her dress in her bloomers. Oh, the baggage. P.C. Attila Reese, ox-broad, barge-booted, stamping out of handcuff house in a heavy beef-red huff, black-browed under his damp helmet. He's going to arrest Polly Garter. Mark my words. What for, dear? For having babies. And lumbering down towards the strand to see that the sea is still there. Mary Ann Sailors opening her bedroom window above the tap room and calling out to the heavens. I'm 85 years, three months and a day. I will say this for her. She never makes a mistake. Oregon Morgan at his bedroom window playing chords on the sill to the morning fishwife gulls who, heckling over Donkey Street, observe. Me, dye bread, hurrying to the bakery, pushing in my shirt tails, buttoning my waistcoat. Ping goes a button. Why can't they sew them? No time for breakfast, nothing for breakfast. There's wives for you. Me, Mrs. Dybred one, capped and shawled and no all corset. Nice to be comfy, nice to be nice. Clogging on the cobbles to stir up a neighbour. Oh, Mrs. Sarah, can you spare a loaf, love? Dybred forgot the bread. There's a lovely morning. How's your boils this morning? Oh, isn't that good news now? It's a change to sit down. Ta, Mrs. Sarah! 